Thanks for clicking on the video and here to add our mimic. We are going to do an unboxing of Unmatched. This is the Cobble and Fog set and it features Invisible Man, Jekyll and Hyde, Dracula, and Sherlock Holmes. This set came out three years ago in 2020 and we have a couple other Unmatched sets within the uh, library here at Nerd Mimic. Uh, it's basically the Marvel sets, including Deadpool. And I heard this one was going out of print or they're not going to publish anymore for a while just to get the other sets uh, sold and more popular. As yeah, so apparently this one is doing quite well, quite re well received. And we thought we'd give it a try before it goes out of print uh, for this generation, I suppose. So let's check it out. Uh, let's flip it to the sides and it's going to have some unique art on the side panels of each of the four main characters here. Pretty nice. And we'll flip it to the back. And you can see it comes with four miniatures that are going to be washed, but I'll get it painted. And it comes with some sidekicks here, cards and a board. And this board is going to feature Soho and Bakersville Manor. Uh, now, part of the reason why I never got this initially was I know it has these sidekicks. And I always thought it was a little bit strange that they have miniatures of these uh, main heroes. But you don't have a miniature of Dr. Watson. who comes with his own health dial, just like Sherlock Holmes. So I always thought that's a little odd and put me a little off. And that's why I got some of the Marvel sets. Because I knew uh, some of the sets that I obtained, they didn't have sidekicks like like this and so um so i put this off for a bit but once again it's going out of print or they're not going to publish it for a while and this one's still highly well received and we thought we'd give it a try for the channel all right so let's get this box open and while i do so if you're new to the channel if you like what you see hopefully you consider subscribing this certainly helps our channel grow up to a thousand so thanks for listening to that and almost got the shrink off all right let's see i could just slip it out of this there we go and like so get the box open Nothing printed within the top lid. Gonna have a catalog here. Showing some of the other older sets. And I also believe the Robin Hood and Bigfoot, uh, they're also gonna stop printing this one as well. Okay, we'll set that catalog off to the side. Of course, there, there will be a rule book. As you know, this game is uh, pretty simple, but very strategic and um, quite popular for a skirmish game. If you've never played it before, certainly I would highly recommend it uh, from what we tried of the marble set. It's quite fun and it's uh, quite engaging. So of course you're going to have a content page, how to play, setup, some examples of how to do a turn, Actions to scheme, to attack, to booster cards. And here's the health dial that was alluded to earlier. Combat example. And special rules for this uh, set. So I guess there are going to be some secret passageways on the game board. Invisible Man can institute some fog tokens, it looks like and team play here. So short rule book, once again, uh, they've had this down to a science now, this uh, unmatched set. And here are some of the cardboards to make the health dials. We'll put that together in a bit. Here is the main board. So this would be Baskerville Manor. And all these different colors denote different zones. And on the flip side would be Soho. All right, so let's set the board to the side. 
Now here are some plastic tokens, and these will be, I presume, Dracula's sisters. And you can see the plastic insert for this game is really nicely done. Uh, inlays for the miniatures, and you can see the titles. Uh, they're sort of raised and engraved looking, and it's really cool. And these plastic tokens would probably go into these wells here. These plastic bits are to hold the uh, health dials together. And of course, each character is going to have a unique deck. So, once again, this game is three years old. I, I think most people have probably seen these uh, cards before, but if not, this is Dracula. He does a melee attack, moves two. And let's see Sherlock Holmes here. He also does a melee attack, moves two. Um, and in the middle here is their special ability. You can see Dr. Watson, he actually does range attack, probably has a little handgun. Invisible man. As a melee character, moves two. Special ability is listed there. And he has a health of 15. Sherlock Holmes, thir 16. And Dracula, only 13. Interesting. And Jekyll and Hyde has a health of 16 as well. Melee character moves two. All right, but let's take a closer look at these minis. Sherlock Holmes. Invisible Man, of course. Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, Sherlock Holmes. So this must be the vampire, Dracula. All right. Now through the power of through the power of uh, time-lapse uh, uh, photography and editing, we're going to get these painted. So here's the whole gang all painted up. Uh, really nice sculpts on each of them. Let's take a closer look here at Sherlock's homes first. And you can see he is sporting a trench coat. He's ready to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. All the while smoking his little pipe that you can see. A lot of fun to get him all painted up. Behind him is the Invisible Man. Beautiful sculpt. You can see how his hat is sort of hanging on there on the collar. And also his hand here, his invisible hand is holding the cane. Beautiful, well done sculpt. <laughs> Definitely better than the one in Horrified. And of course, Jekyll and Hyde here. Got this flask here with a green potion and solution in there. And you can sort of see him turning into a monster. And he got an uh, axe ready to go. And of course, not, but not least, is Dracula here with monstrous fangs. A very dapper looking fellow. Okay, so once again, those are the four figures within the game, all painted up, and I suppose we should put them back in the box, see how they look. Okay, we got all of our heroes resting in their associated slots, and we got the plastic tokens in their wells. Uh, Dr. Watson, once again, is a plastic token, not a miniature and uh, sort of a, a pet peeve. I, I don't like this uh, idea, um, but anyways, it is what it is. Let's take a closer look at the Sherlock Holmes deck here. Uh, his special ability is effects on Holmes and Dr. Watson cards cannot be canceled by an opponent. Effects on any cards can be canceled. And then his action cards here. Let's see, you got to counter punch, faint. As most characters do, confirm suspicion, choose an opponent, name a value. Your opponent must choose and discard one card matching that attack or defense value. Mm, powerful. Holmes, action, eliminate the impossible, 
choose an opponent, look at their hand, and choose one card for them to discard. Faint Elementary. Play this card face up. Predict the printed attack value on the opponent's card. During combat, if you predicted the correct value, cancel all effects of the opponent's card and order its attack value. Pretty cool. So this game is really strategic and uh, definitely of benefit to know the other player's deck, um, which uh, I have learned from the other set. So th this is no exception. Uh, this might be his more powerful card. We'll see in a bit. Attack of five. Or this is for Dr. Watson, actually. Steady methods after combat. If you want the uh, combat, look at, at your opponent's hand. To do strategy during combat, you may change the printed value of your opponent's card to its boost value. Interesting. Oh, here's a power card for Holmes. Attack value of five. The game is afoot. After combat, move Holmes up to three spaces. Education never ends. After combat, if you won the combat, your opponent draws one card. If you lose the combat, you draw two cards. Ah, interesting. For suspicion again, Master of Disguise, choose an opponent of home swap spaces with their hero, deal one damage to that hero. Fixed point in changing age. After combat, if Dr. Watson is adjacent to homes, they each recover one health. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Counter punch. Another think card. All right, so we've seen most of these. Administer aid, Dr. Watson, scheme card. Place Dr. Watson in a space adjacent to Dr. Holmes. Holmes recovers one health, draw a card. So it's pretty helpful. And Holmes is, uh, has a lot of health to start off with, 16. Okay. All right, so that looks like his entire deck. As I mentioned, his health, starting health for Sherlock Holmes is 16. Here's the back of the dial. And once again, Dr. Watson has his own separate dial. He starts at eight, and that's the back of that dial. All right, so let me set this back and we'll look at another deck here. And I suppose we will move on to Dracula here. And he has three vampire sisters that ate him. They all actually have a different portrait. I should show that off, I suppose. There you go. And while I have that out, might as well take a look at his Dial, and he starts at 13 health. They always do very cool designs on these dial. Okay, so let's go back to his deck. And his special action is, at the start of your turn, you may deal one damage to a fighter adjacent to Dracula. If you do, draw one card. And once again, he has some associated sisters with him. Okay, so here is a card for the sisters. Thirst for sustenance after a combat. If you won the combat, place Dracula in any space adjacent to that opposing fighter. A scheme card, prey upon, deal one damage to all opposing fighters adjacent to Dracula. Dracula recovers one health for each damage dealt. Probably sucking their blood, of course. Feeding Frenzy during combat. This card's value is plus one for each sister in the same zone as the producing fighter. Doing my bidding, immediately return your opponent's attack card to their hand. Look at their hand and choose a attack or a versatile card for them to play. It may be the same card. Another faint card. Do my bidding. Return your opponent's card back to the hand. And I think... Yeah, that's what we just read before. Raving Seduction. Move any fighter up to two spaces. After moving, deal one damage to the moved fighter for each sister adjacent to them. So obviously with the sisters, you want to surround your opponent. 
Ambush. During combat, your opponent discards one random card at its boost value to this card's attack value. Prey upon, ambush, look into my eyes, add the boost value of your opponent's attack card to the defense value of this card. Different. Baptism of fire here, recover to health. Return a defeated sister, if any, to any space in Dracula's zone. So this might be pretty powerful at the right time. Dash. Hmm. That's about it. Oh, here's another one. Miss form. Place Dracula in any space. Game one action. So there appears to be a lot of movement cards here. So maybe that helps him surround an opponent. Look into my eyes again. Beast form. During combat, you may discard any number of cards from your hand. This card's value is plus one for each card you discard. So that's pretty much it. Seem to be a lot of similar cards in this deck for Dracula. Let's move up to Jekyll and Hyde here. He comes with this potion token to denote, I suppose, which side or power you're using. And he has a health dial here that starts at 16. And the flip side is blank. Okay. So let's look at his special ability here. Start the game as Dr. Jekyll. At the start of your turn, you may transform into Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. While well, Mr. Hyde, after you maneuver, take one damage. Uh-oh, that's interesting. Okay, as Mr. Hyde, this is a power card. Plus five damage, forever high. During combat, you may discard Dr. Jekyll cards. Add two to this card's value for each card you discard. Wow. So this can uh, be really powerful. Quality of man during combat. If you are Dr. Jekyll and playing this card to defend, this card's value is six instead. If you are Mr. Hyde and playing this card to attack, this card is six instead. Strange case. Reveal the top card of your deck. Add damage equal to the boost value to one adjacent fighter. Put the card in your hand. Distract a triage after combat. If you want combat, recover to health. Skirmish. Forever hide. Pure evil. If Mr. Hyde is in any space in his zone, oh, place Mr. Hyde in any space in his zone. Mr. Hyde deals two damage to all adjacent fighters. So, really dangerous if you're in the same zone with him. Succumb to compulsion. After combat, move up to two spaces. Transform into Mr. Hyde. With haste, after combat, move Dr. Jekyll up to four spaces. A Mr. Hyde card, recoiling below. After combat, place Mr. Hyde in any space in his zone. Transform into Dr. Jekyll. Skirmish card, quality of man. During combat, if you are Dr. Jekyll and playing this card to defend, oh, I think I read this card already, apologies. Scientific method, after combat, draw a number of cards equal to the damage you were dealt. A faint card. Calming research, recover to health, draw up to three cards, keep one and put the others back to the bottom of your deck in any order. So yeah, there might be a lot of healing cards for him if you're gonna lose health every time you um, stay around as Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll, defense four. After combat, move Dr. Jekyll up to four spaces. And a skirmish card, faint card. Strange case, reveal the top card of your deck. Add damage equal to its boost value to one adjacent fighter, put the card in your hand. Okay, so that's pretty much his deck there. Jekyll and Hyde. And the last deck is Invisible Man. He starts off with a dial 
at a health of 15, at the back of his dial. And he has three fog tokens here. Let's look at his special ability here. At the start of the game, after you place Mr. Uh, Invisible Man, place three fog tokens in separate spaces in his zone. When Invisible Man is in a space with a fog token, add one to the value of his defense cards. Invisible Man may move between two spaces with fog tokens as if they were adjacent. Oh, so teleporting, I suppose. Okay, so his deck of cards include con Covert Preparation. After combat, draw one card, move one fog token up to two spaces, then your opponent moves a fog token up to two spaces. Uh, moves a different fog token up to two spaces. So, interesting. So, instead of plastic tokens to denote sidekicks, uh, we have cardboard tokens for the uh, fog. Um, if you're going to use it as a sidekick, uh, maybe it would be nicer if they included a plastic token as well. Okay, well, that uh, <laughs> aside, let's see what other cards he has. Impossible to see. Immediately, the value of your opponent's attack or defense is zero and cannot be changed by card effects. Emerge from mist. If Invisible Man has charged his turn in on a space with a fog token. This card's value is five instead. Step lightly, deal one damage to an adjacent fighter. If Invisible Man is on a space with a fog token, deal three damage instead. Your opponent then moves a fog token up to two spaces. Into thin air, after combat, move Invisible Man up to one space. Your opponent then moves a fog token up to three spaces. So it's interesting, a lot of the cards your opponent can manipulate your fog. Lurking, after combat, draw one card and choose effect. You can either move Invisible Man to a space with a fog token or move one fog token up to three spaces. Vanish, recover one health, remove Invisible Man from the board. At the start of your turn, place uh, Invisible Man in any space. Mm, any space, I suppose. Not with a fog token. Coded notes. After combat, draw three cards, then choose two cards from your hand and put them um, on the top of your deck in any order. Roving fog. Move one fog token to one space. Gain an action. Vanish again. Confound. After combat, your opponent may choose to discard one card. If they do not, you may move each fog token to any other space. Here's his power attack, five. Surprise attack, immediately cancel all the effects of your opponent's card. After combat, if a visible man is on a space with a fog token, move that fog token to another space. Dreaming of Revenge. After combat, if Invisible Man is on a space with a fog token, all opposing fighters on spaces with fog tokens take one damage. Step away. Rolling fog again. Surprise attack. So you got two surprise attack cards. Alright, so that's pretty much the deck for the Invisible Man. Alright, so... Well... Say goodbye to these uh, figures. And that, once again, has been an unboxing of a match, Cobble and Fog. And once again, it's a skirmish game. And hopefully had fun going over that. I certainly had fun uh, going over the deck and enjoying the miniatures. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a great night. Keep on adventuring out there.